Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 A Game of Thrones. We are carrying straight on from where we left off with Xander Longspear, our custom house playthrough. Now I do realise I watched the last episode I made back of this series. I watched it back and I realised I was quite quick and kind of rushed through the episode. I do apologise for that. I, it was kind of, I wanted to get that video out on the day and I was a bit rushed for time. So if it sounded like I was like speeding through the video and if I didn't explain anything properly then I do apologise. It was just me being sort of scatterbrained and trying to get it finished. I'll also point out that I'm recording this the day after the first video went out. So I, I, that went out last Tuesday, it will be for you. I'm recording it on the Wednesday. So if you have left any comments about the backstory of this character or any sort of important characters you want me to have on the you know the special interest list, I'm not ignoring you. I promise I'm not ignoring you. Uh, it's just the way the recording schedule works means I've had to record this sort of straight after basically. So the third episode, I'll, I've read every comment and, and adopted hopefully some of your ideas into it. Now, as I said, we are carrying on straight from where we left off. So currently we have a claim on Antlers and we are trying to get a claim on Birch Hall. If you didn't actually watch the first episode, we're playing in Brindlewood here and our plan is to try and take Antlers, try and take Birch Hall and hopefully with these three bits of land we'll have enough men to take Hollard Hall and Duskendale and claim the High Lordship of Duskendale. Uh, because that gives us a strong little power base to work from. And there are a lot of High Lordships um, around here that we can take. So, um, oh, that's just a little thing. Um, so we have Rosby below us. If we have a look at the High Lordship of Rosby, this controls uh, Edgerton, Rollingford, Rosby, and Sow's Horn, which is just there. Uh, we then got Blackwater Rush, which is capital as Rainet, but it also con uh, contains Chittering Brook, Mosborough, and Byford. So. You know, if you took, started to take some of these High Lordships, you'd actually end up with a lot of land. Most of the land of the uh, Crown Lands, to be honest. Obviously, the Stormlands, currently Robert Brathian won his Rebellion. We are playing in the Robert's Rebellion scenario. That's where we started. So, he does actually have um, the Iron Throne, the Crown Lands, and Storm, the Stormlands all under one banner. So, quite a, quite a powerful force at the moment. So, we are going to be, have to be careful about not crossing him too much. Uh, we've also got these little lordships up here, you know, Crackclaw Baron, uh, Rook's Rest, all the way up to North Crackclaw Point. This could be united to the High Lordship of Crackclaw Point, which again would have given us a lot of troops and a lot of money. So once we've finished, take, basically our first ambition is to take Duskendale, because that kind of unlocks everything for us. We can start to uh, give out land to our hopeful heirs. We don't actually have an heir yet, which is something we're working on. But also our rival is Oberyn the Red Viper, which is a dangerous, dangerous person to have as a rival. We are actually a better fighter than him, surprisingly, so if it comes to it and we have to fight him, we should be alright. Uh, we have actually had two wives, I will point out as well. We were married to Ilaria Sand, who is uh, a relative of... Oh no, I don't think it is a relative of uh, Oberyn. Uh, I'm a bit, I, I don't quite know, to be honest. Uh, but they had an affair, so I, I divorced my wife. And we're now married to Pera Arin of Gulltown. And we are... And she's pregnant. There we go. Okay, so I was just speaking of needing an heir. And she is pregnant, so we'll have, hopefully, a son. But if, even if we have a daughter, it means our line is a bit more secure. And we can focus on other matters. Now, one thing I want to focus on as well is trying to improve my court if I can. So we're going to have a look for people we could invite to the court. If you haven't played this game, it is quite fun to try and build up a little court of your own. So we're going to look for the best warriors that we can... Very true. I have ruler off because obviously rulers aren't going to join my court. This is purely, you know, courtiers who may not have uh, land of their own or, you know, they may be unconnected. So we have Goodwin Trant here who will join our court. So we'll invite him. His marshal is 20, which is very good. Not the best fighter, but he'll be a good marshal. Because he's not a very good commander, we won't need him out on the field. So that works out quite well. We could probably do with a couple more commanders as well. Yeah, 9 and 13 is not a good score. So we can find some brilliant commanders, that would help. We've got a beautiful commander who's strong, so he's going to be a decent fighter. We'll invite him to court as well. It doesn't cost anything to invite them, so I might as well, you know, stack my court a little bit with some good warriors who can hopefully help me out on my conquests. We're also going to need, I think, a better Justiceer. Now, we've got a very good Justiceer, actually. Possibly a better Spy Master and a better Treasure would go a long way to help. But because we're such a small little county, it doesn't mean everyone's going to want to join. Some people will be happy serving bigger lords. I say that, but Arwood Holton wants to join, and he's got a a um, intrigue of 19, which is very good indeed. We'll have to make sure he likes us, though, otherwise he may betray us. So we're going to look for a better treasure as well. Possibly won't, because treasurers are very well-wanted people, so 
it's unlikely people are going to want to join our call. We can send gifts to people to try and persuade them, but we don't have much money and I'm not too bothered. I mean, you know, 11 and 11, not the best, but it's still going to help. So, a couple more people joining our call. Goodwin Trance arrived, as has Arwood Holton, so he'll be our new Spymaster and Sir Rickard Silverax, which is a brilliant name, actually. Um, so we'll change our call a little bit. We need uh, Goodwin as our Master at Arms. He's going to help us get some more troops. And Sir Lucas needs to be replaced by Arwood. And he'll be spying in Duskendale to make sure we're getting sort of in-depth reports of what's going on there, basically. And we need to replace Sir Tymon of Palsin with Rickard Fell to be our new bodyguard. Now, neither of these are particularly good fighters, but I'll have them as bodyguards anyway. Because then if we need to take them into battle, they will help us in duels and things like that. And generally try and keep us safe as best they can. So, hopefully, this will work out quite well. So, I'm happy with the, the additions we've made there. We are now just waiting for a claim on Birch Hall. We're also waiting for our troops to reinforce. Again, if you didn't watch the last... Oh, we're being sieged again. What is going on? Why is John Greyjohn sieging my land in particular? In both wars, the Iron Throne has fought. It's been my land that seems to have suffered. We've been sieged twice now. First by, I believe it was, um, was it the Vale? Or was it, the, oh no, it was Rivermen. It was the uh, Kingdom of the Trident that did it. Um, I keep calling them Rivermen, I don't know why. Um, how can I rely on my generals when the understanding of warfare is so lacking compared to my own? I could teach Ehrman a thing, of t a thing or two. Um, so we'll train him to be better on heavy foot because we have, most of our men are heavy foot. We have 1,155 heavy infantry. So if he can lead them a bit better, It'll help their skill in battle. So what I'm hoping is this army is going to come and help. But there's only 145 people. So I doubt it. King Robert, can you please chase these people off my land? I want to have some soldiers. Because we need to wait for these to reinforce before we can do anything about Antlers or Birch Hall. And we were actually reinforcing quite well. But now we're going to have to start all over again. Which is annoying. No, he looks like he's just trying to break the seed of Rook's Rest. Which is rather annoying for us. No one seems to want to help us. We'll remember this, though. We'll remember what John Great John did to us. In fact, he is leading the army there as well, so makes it even more frustrating. There is a big army there from the from the Trident. Another big army there from Griffin's Roost. So I'm a bit annoyed that no one's coming to help us, really. But we are a very small bit of land. No one really cares about us. Ah, we've had a daughter. There we go. Melora Longspear. Should we stay with the name Melora? I might change that, actually. I might change it to... No, I'll keep it as Melora, actually. I, I tend to like to keep the names as they are. So we do at least have an heir. It is a daughter, so we could do with a son to make our line a bit more secure. But if push comes to shove, we do have an heir now, so the game won't end at all. Um, so the siege has been finished, so we did lose the siege, so we have lost all our men. Once again, we're going to have to build up again, as their army has just wandered off. So thanks, King Robert. Not getting my support anymore. Can I assassinate him? No surprisingly. Um, I do have a chance to assassinate my liege, but I feel like that's a bit unnecessary. So they have completely wiped us out of troops, which is annoying. A group of hedge knights have come to visit Brindlewood. My just seer William, has met with them and asked how I'd like to greet them. So I can welcome them with a lavish feast, welcome them reluct reluctantly, or refuse them access. I'm going to welcome them with a lavish feast. I feel like uh, Lord Xander, and we've got the Gregarious trait as well. He is rude, um, which maybe he wouldn't have invited them, but at the same time, you know, he's a military man, and he, he would, I think he'd like the idea of having these armed men in his court and, and feast with these warriors and share stories and that sort of thing. We are still stressed, which is a bit annoying. A young hedge knight has distinguished himself quite nicely in the time he's been at our castle. So we have Sir Kevin Hook, who's 22 Marshal. We are definitely going to take him into our service for one gold. And he can actually now be our new Marshal, who's even better than Goodwin Trant. Uh, although, is he a brilliant commander? No, he's a dutiful commander, so... Um, Trant can now be our other commanders. We'll have two very good commanders for when we go into battle. And he's not married, so we can try and marry him off to someone. Maybe someone with a high... Uh, I'm not sure if women can be treasurers, but we'll, she's a quick... She's got the trait quick, and she's a decent steward, so we'll invite her to a court as his wife, and hopefully we can use her at some point, or she might pass her traits on, her quick trait, to him. So can she be our treasurer, or it can only be men? Yeah, it can only be men. That's fair enough. I kind of thought that might be the case, but it should be useful to have around the court anyway. See, why can't this army, like, attack Antlers and Birch Hall? Because then it'd be a lot easier for us to besiege them. The Hedge Knights are ready to depart our castle and ride forth to another Lord's Domain. We'll give them a farewell feast and increase our prestige slightly. 
I don't feel like Xander uh, Longspear is someone who's bothered about you know money and making sure to hold some cash. I feel like he'd just spend it and make people like him a bit more. I think that's kind of his ambition to try and curry some favour. So now they decide to arrive and break the siege, but it's a bit late. We still need to reinforce completely. Our spymaster has had a daughter, so that's useful. I do like to have a, a court with lots of people who are kind of having heirs to their family name and, and kind of keep families in my service kind of thing. Similar to sort of how in the actual series and in the books, a lot of families have kind of sub-families that serve them. I kind of like to have that. The church has just gotten some very beautiful stained glass windows, and I and Sir Willem, uh, Sir William, sorry, or Willem, yeah, Willem, okay, uh, contemplated the widows, the priest, oh, sorry, I'm reading this completely wrong, contemplated the windows, the priest approached us, and asked what we thought about them. I thought about the symbolism of the windows while Sir Willem had just repeated what I said. So we can say it's too arbitrary to voice his own opinion, or we could say it's a bit flattering, really. I'll say it's a bit flattering, although we are rude, so maybe we wouldn't. But we are also sort of deceitful and cynical, and maybe we try and like take it to our advantage and make him like us a bit more. So I think I'm going to go with it was a bit flattering, really. Try and, you know, make him think he's better than he is, which I guess is still rude. Are we going to get sieged again? Is he literally just coming to siege us again? Just... <sighs> I hate everything at the moment. Can we assassinate... John Grey, John. No, we're too far away, obviously. But I don't know why we're the only ones that get siege. Russ and Rook's Rest, that's the only two they're attacking. They could attack Hollard Hall, or Duskendale, Antlers, or Birch Hall, but no, it's just us. Really annoying at the moment. We're not making any progress because of this, which is the most frustrating thing. We could have taken Antlers by now, but... Um, yeah, it's just, it's just frustrating. But it's war, you know, they have every right. We do have a uh, levy of reinforcements, so hopefully we will reinforce quite quickly once they leave us alone. Are they attacking Hollard Hall now? No, they're going to get attacked, aren't they, before they can even do any damage. Yeah, I definitely don't like King Robert at the moment. I've invited people in my court to take part in a war game in which we practice defending our land from invading enemies. Well, definitely useful right now. We will use wooden models to represent invading armies, and I shall have to use clever tactics to defeat my opponents. This will be fun. Uh, as we sign tasks for war games, we decide that Arwood will defend with me, while Tymond will be leading the invading forces. Let the best warlords win. At the beginning of the war game, the enemy quickly tries to advance up the hills in the area to get a strategical advantage. Uh, bring all our forces to contest the defensive grounds. Make sure we hold the high ground. The enemy ascends the hill quickly alongside our troops. As we reach the top of the hill simultaneously, our armies clash in an outright brawl. Arwood suggests that we spread our tired troops evenly on the field. So we can either spread out heavily and light, heavy and light troops evenly along the line, focus our heavy troops in the centre, or put all available troops on the left flank. Um, I would want us to do that, and I feel like I agree with him. Kind of keep the strength everywhere. So we'll try that, see how it works. We managed to exhaust our opponent by holding a stable line, standing as clear victors of the war game. So we managed to win, and we get Student of Strategy, which gives us an extra point in Marshall, which is always nice. And we gain some prestige as well. So they're now trying to break the siege again. They've actually won the war. So now we won't get siege anymore. We can start to build up our forces. I mean, it's not too much of an issue because we have given our uh, just to see a time to get claim on Birch Hall. My Lord, His Grace King Robert has seen fit to name Stannis Baratheon Lord Paramount of the Stormlands. He and his sons and grandsons shall hold and enjoy this honour until the end of time. So that's quite interesting actually because of course in the in the series and in the books he actually gives the stormlands to renly and stannis gets dragonstone which makes uh, stannis very unhappy and it's kind of a major point of content between the two of them so giving it to stannis is interesting uh Lyanna is still classed as missing uh, rather than dead uh which is interesting is arthur dane still alive i know this is kind of quite spoilerific but hey we'll go with it anyway no he's still on a quest they haven't actually found Lyanna Stark yet, yeah, which is interesting. Uh, so if you don't know the story, it's mentioned in the Tower of Joy scene in the series that uh, Arthur Dane and Sir Gerald Hightower, I think it's Hightower, are protecting Lyanna uh, Stark at, or Lyanna Baratheon, depending on how you look at it, at the Tower of Joy down in Prince's Pass. So in the game, it starts out off with Gerald Hightower and Arthur Dane being on a uh, on a quest somewhere else. So obviously they haven't been found yet, which is interesting. It'd be interesting to see what happens if Arthur Dane survives, because he is, of course, one of the greatest warriors probably ever, really. In recognition of your glory and honour, accept an office to anoint you with holy oils and grants you knighthood. 
Now I could cheat the game here and quickly switch my ambition to be knighted, but I'm not going to do that. I feel like that's slightly cheating. But we are now known as a knight. We are Lord Xander Longspear, the knight of Brindlewood. Which is kind of what we wanted. We wanted to be knight, knighted, because uh, it gives us more prestige, which is nice. And also advantage to mounted troops, which is interesting to say. Uh, we don't have many cavalry though, so it's not too much of an advantage. We have 51 heavy cavalry, which is not a huge amount, obviously. So we just need to wait until all this reinforces, and then we'll take Antlers, which will give us the troops we need to then take Birch Hall. It's kind of a domino effect. Once we start to take one bit of land, the rest will slowly fall. So it's going to be quite, I wouldn't say easy to start with. So Cavern has dragged his unfaithful spouse, Eglantine. Eglantine? Sure, we'll go with that. Before me, and insist I should punish her. So this is a waste of my time, or she'll be locked in the stock. Well, we are ruthless, so I think we would lock her in the stock. So we'll go with that. Do we have any prisoners, actually? No, we don't. Fair enough. Um, we're also apparently helping to kill Felice of Duskendale, which is his wife. Yeah, okay. That would be interesting, though, because then it would pass to Jeremy of Holland Hall, who also doesn't have any kids, actually, which is even more interesting. So, very high possibility the Rikers are not going to survive very long here, if they're not careful. Um, but we'll have to wait and see about that. So, yeah, the two things we're waiting for are troops to reinforce, and, in fact, we've nearly caught up with Antlers as well, despite the fact we've been sieged twice. We still have nearly have as many men as they do. And then we need a claim on Birch Hall to take it from the Birches. Which is a bit cruel, really, to take Birch Hall from the Birches, but we'll go for it anyway. And take the Buckwell's land as well, and then we'll have a nice kind of plot of land to, to build from, and build some military buildings, increase our troop amount, and obviously our income as well for our quest to take Duskendale, and then expand outwards, and hopefully one day maybe take Dragonstone. I think that'd be an interesting ambition to have. Um, the Faith of Seven Priests can be a bit irritable, and after my latest blunder, I feel the need to be extra careful around them. Too bad I cannot really rely on myself when I'm stressed to be anything else but blunt. So we can say I can take care of this myself, or Sept and Roderick should be able to handle this better than I would. So we... There's a chance we lose some learning, and there's a chance we lose the trait stress. I'm going to go with that in the hope that we don't become stressed. They're excellent. Okay, brilliant. So, we're no longer stressed, which helps everything really. Our health improves, our fertility improves, and our skills improve slightly. So, that is very useful. So, we've made some progress, at least this episode. But mostly, we've just been sieged, and our troops have been murdered. Does he actually have any allies? He doesn't. He has a lot of people he could ally with. But he hasn't decided to. I think we actually have enough men, possibly, to beat him. But I'm just going to wait a little bit longer until we have sort of about, I guess, 100 more. Although we won't be able to siege them properly. We need 600 men to siege the castle. Ah, brilliant. My work in Birch Hall has come to fruition. So we have a claim now on Birch Hall as well. Immediately we're going to swap our just to see it to getting a claim on Hollard Hall. Uh, because if we can take Hollard Hall first, then there is no opposition to us taking Duskendale. And if we have a claim there anyway, it just helps to have claims on everything. So now we can attack either of these bits of land. He has more men though, he seems to be building up a lot quicker. Although he is ill as well, so he wouldn't fall to his son. Who may not command the same respect and as many troops. But we are slowly getting there. I'm going to speed the game up slightly. In the hopes that we can build up quickly. I do want to take Antlers before this episode finishes. So we have at least some progress that we can say we've made. And I can't even hire any mercenaries with that poor. Lord John II of Northfield has usurped the title the Lordship Crow's Baron from Sir Peter Breakstone. Apparently he's now attacking against the tyranny. If you become and come and besiege us, I am going to murder you. Okay, it looks like he's raised an army though to go and beat him back, so we're alright. I was kind of really worried that we're gonna end up being sieged again. So I don't know why he decided to claim war. That was a bit a bit ridiculous. Uh fate smiles upon me, my wife is pregnant again. Brilliant. Can we have a son this time? That would really help us out. Because then I can marry off my daughter to get an alliance. Are there any actually good alliances we could get at the moment? Um, I doubt there are many in the Crown Lands, and I don't know if I want one of the Crown Lands anyway. Um, oh, there's a uh, there's a Tarth there, which is, um, yeah, Tarth. Um, so this is the same thing we had before, so I'll say it's a bit flattering, really. Kind of stick to the same decision. So he's taking Cracklaw Crack Baron, so who's he going to give it to? That's the interesting question. And Robert wants to expand his realm by conquest, so I'm not quite sure where he's going to attack. Ah, that's good though, because he's actually created the High Lordship of Cracklaw Point. Which is interesting, because if um, if we want to take it, 
all we need is the High Lordship. Rather than taking every individual bit of land, we can try and just get a claim on the entire Lordship, which is useful. Alright, how many men do we have? 663. He has 408, so we need enough that we can besiege them as well, which is going to be the annoying part. So if we can get to about a thousand men, I reckon we can probably think about attacking them, because we do have better commanders than them as well. Well, I'm presuming better commanders, because we have me who's got a skill of 24, and then we've got two who are 20 and 19. I've had another daughter called Roella. Stick with that name. So, I mean, useful to have multiple children, but at the same time, a son would be nice. We'll have to keep with that ambition. We can hold a tournament. I'm not going to waste money on that. My Master of Arms has had a son. Brilliant. So he can be trained up to hopefully be a commander in the future. Um, Lord Ulrich of Brinstone wants to kill me because I actually slayed his father in... I know his father, his brother, in a duel over Ilaria Sand, who was my former wife. So, a bit messy there. A bit, a bit annoying. Um, I didn't actually read what that says. I think it was just him having his coronation. Which is fair enough. Right, we're very nearly there, I think, with in terms of troops. Oh, he says it there, doesn't it? 833. So keep an eye on how many he has. He has only five, nearly 500. So, definitely have enough men to beat his army. It's just whether we have enough men to then besiege his castle and take it quickly. Jesters, minstrels, acrobats and dancers all have gathered to perform at the festival. Inviting noises, tempting scents and alluring sights try to lure people to various stands, performers and tents. Oh no, not again. Or a festival nobody told me. I think I'd go with not again because we have the cynical trait. So we'll go with that, which actually makes us even more cynical. So we have very high intrigue at the moment. So if we wanted to assassinate someone, now would be the time. But I don't think we'll have many targets, to be honest. Sir Cameron has dragged his unfaithful spouse before me and insists I punish her Again? Does she need to be punished again? Really? Fair enough, I'll lock her in stock again. Why not? But it's nice that you had a son, that's, that's useful. My wife is pregnant again. Hopefully this one's a son. I think if we have a son and claim Atlas, we can say this was a successful episode. So we have nearly double- oh, we lost our Justice here. And he was really good as well. Do we have anyone else just as good? 15, not bad, so we'll stick with him. And try and gain a claim on a hollowed hull. I may look for someone else to replace him, but for now 15 is a decent enough uh, diplomacy score. So as I said, once we get to a thousand troops, we'll probably declare war and try and take Antlers. Melora is slow to learn to talk, so we can encourage her by example, which she could become trusting, slothful, greedy, or have a stutter. We could birch the words from her, which is wrathful, deceitful, or stutter. Let her take a time, 50% chance she gets a stutter, which I don't really want. Uh, could become diligent or trusting. Or send her to the nannies. Um, I think I'll go let Melora take her time. Please don't have a stutter. Oh dear. She did. Well, she's luckily she hopefully won't be my heir for long. We'll have a son and then we can marry her off. So it's not too big an issue. Uh, as long as we have that son who will then replace her as my heir. So we have a thousand troops now. He has less than 500. I reckon I can... Oh, he's imprisoned his wife as well, which is a bit weird. Um... So what I'm going to do, I'm going to declare war straight away. No messing about. Raise all my men and combine us into one army. We can have me leading. Oh, I can't lead. Oh, because I'm his master of arms, aren't I? So we'll have Rickon and Goodwin take this battle. They're running away immediately, which is weird. Uh, but we'll just go and besiege his castle. That makes it easy, even easier. Because he is actually in the castle, I think. Oh no, he's in Duskendale, which doesn't really help me that much. They are forming a bigger army, though. Not quite sure where that army came from. We've had another daughter and she died stillborn. Still not having a son though, which is really worrying at this point. So they're going to try and besiege Brindlewood, but I should have finished this siege before they have a chance to finish theirs. So this is kind of a race to see who can besiege who quicker. And if it gets bad, we can just march across and take them out. We should have enough people. I mean, I could resign as Master of Arms for a moment and, and finish this, but... I don't feel like that's necessary. I feel like our commanders are good enough as they are. I mean, we have nearly enough of uh, a garrison there, so... Uh, we could go across and kill them, but I'll finish this first uh, siege of Antlers, the castle, and then we'll march across and finish them off. Hopefully, unless we fail somehow. Alright, so we've managed to capture some prisoners and besiege the castle. So what we'll do, do now... He's run straight across. We have lost a lot of men, though. I'm not quite sure why. Um, we'll run across now and try and take them out. He wants to ransom 
Ah, he surrenders. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Well, I'll accept that surrender. Uh, I think after we took his family, he may be questioned his choices there. So we now own Antlers and Brindlewood. So we've done half of what I want to do. We'll try and ransom all our prisoners and get a bit more money back. Managed to get a little bit. Not as much as I was hoping for, but... Ah, we got some money. I guess that does. So we're going to wrap the episode up now. As I said, I was going to stop the episode as soon as we took Antlers. I mean, I could, you know, try and take Birch Hall, but I don't think I have the men just yet. So we'll let our forces build up slightly uh, in Antlers and Brindlewood, and then hopefully have enough men to besiege Birch Hall. So this has been a quite a positive episode. I'm going to pause it now because a lot of things are happening. Um, he's taking land from Grand Martel. Um, says he's a traitor to the realm. He's disfigured as well. Poor Duran Martel. Uh, but yeah, we've had a positive episode. We've had three children, which was, well, two children. One died at birth, unfortunately. We've had two daughters. One's got a stutter and one is one years old, so hasn't got anything yet, really yet. Still waiting to have a son, of course, and you know, at that point we might as well try and have five children so we have a strong bloodline to go with. We managed to take Antlers, so we kind of started on our way to completing our objective of taking Duskendale. And things are going quite hunky-dory at the moment. So if you have enjoyed the video, please do feel free to leave a like. I'm looking forward to carrying on this series. I'm really enjoying it so far. I hope you are as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.